talking about um, the formal name would be integrated participatory and distributive justice okay basically think about it as democracy for taxation if you'd like um, and I'm going to start um, by just overviewing what we have in mind participatory justice is is much more general than just like voting in a democracy it means that in a small community everybody's given voice men women and children uh, everybody nobody's left out everybody's included um, everybody has a duty to participate too and uh, in, in when I do the modeling if you get into the um, the, the way we represent it with an influence diagram, um, if you read in the book, the, the strength of an arc will represent the amount of particip participation. And they, people can contribute many things. They can contribute to cultural, economic, political, or social life. So there's all kinds of things gonna happen. In the diagram on the right, um, what we have is, is a, an example of uh, an election in a country people interact with each other, talk about the candidates, the media informs everybody about the candidates, and then there's voters and they pick candidates. Sometimes those candidates sort of represent them. You know, if you elect your senator or congressperson, you know, they represent you to vote on behalf of you, right? And uh, they may not do that, but then next time you kick the bums out, right? That's the idea of a democracy. Uh, so it's, it's kind of got a self-correcting feature. Now today, um, what we're going to do is model a democracy and simulate a democracy. But we're gonna, we got to have something to vote on. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on last lecture. All right. Remember, let's, let's let's recall from the last lecture we had the wealth distribution strategy. So in that strategy. Let's just review for a second. Each of you has a stack of money, um, and you have your neighbors, and there's a local policy, and um, it says that if Courtney has a lot of money and, and Aaron has a little bit of money, she might, um, if she's generous, give half the difference between that amount of money and equalize their two amounts of money by that wealth transfer, okay? Um, and then it could be less than that, but all of you could be passing money around, so eventually the stacks of money would all equalize. Okay, that was the idea if we picked the policy properly. Okay, so that's what we discussed last time. We simulated it, we showed how for equal people, what really happened was is we had, the emer we had mutual cooperation, everybody helping e each other out. Everybody did better, at no expense to anybody. It was like magic. Unfortunately, that was the ideal case. When we went to inequality, then typically the rich person suffered to help the poorer people. And that's intuitively what you expect in a wealth distribution system, okay? Now we're gonna change the game, okay? So now what's gonna happen is Courtney's gonna transfer, let's say she transfers money to Aaron. Aaron gets money. And the next step we're going to do is, is each of them is going to look at the situation and say, did I like that or not? If, they, if, if Aaron liked it, because he got a lot of money, he benefited, he's going to vote to increase generosity. In other words, Courtney gave me more and more money. Courtney's going to vote to decrease generosity because she doesn't want to be giving him all that money. Now imagine we have that whole situation across the whole room. Money transfers are going on simultaneously. Everybody's voting for whether they like the outcome or not. Everybody's using the same generosity parameter. That's known by everybody. And then what everybody says is after the tra we act as we, in the simulation, transfers occur. Everybody assesses how they did. Then they vote to increase or decrease the generosity. And that's it. Or keep it the same. Now, that, that's a pretty complex situation, right? It's pretty hard, actually, to see what's going to happen in such a situation um, because, uh, because of the compl high complexity. Uh, but that, that's exactly what we're going to simulate, only we're not going to use 50 people, like in this room, I think it's 52, minus people that couldn't make it today, but we're going to use three people. Okay, and three is not some magic, well, it's a little bit of a magic number because it's a lot more interesting to do three for wealth distribution transfers than two because then they're just given back and forth. But um, it's a simple matter to take, go from three 
up to 10, 20, or 100. The only problem is, is your laptop bogs down because of the computation time, okay? So we're gonna stick with three. Um, the situation we're gonna, to give you an overview of what we're doing, it, it's gonna look like this. So we have uh, in the boxes here, persons one, two, and three. So person one has their wealth. They have a PID strategy trying to recommend what they should spend and regulate their wealth to $25 a day, and they're making a dollar a day, random income stream, um, and all the people are doing that. Next, there's a wealth distribution policy. These people are transferring money to each other to try to help each other out if the generosity parameter is set to be greater than zero. If the generosity parameter is zero, then nobody's transferring any money, okay? Then we're gonna have a voting. Now, the voting is gonna be based on the following. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna consider three things. I'm gonna consider how many, do under the current generosity, how much um, money I got in donations, that's good, minus how much I had to give away, that's the bad part, Plus, how much spending I do on myself. That's a good thing. I want to spend lots of money on myself, okay? And I'm going to look at those three numbers, and I'm going to say, at an instant, this was good for me. And I'm going to make an assumption, then, about <coughs> changing G. In other words, generosity, up or down. We'll explain how in a minute. So... Because that's a little tricky because you don't know whether they go up or down. But we need a little bit of math to explain that. Now, at the same time, all these votes <coughs> are collected, transfers up to the Democratic level. And at that level, we're going to compute a simple majority vote. You know, if, if in here 10 people said to decrease generosity and 30 people said to increase generosity, we're going to increase generosity. Okay? And then I'm going to update that parameter, pass it back down here, and everybody's got to live with it. That's the agreement that we make in this community. Is just, if everybody votes for it, we'll agree to it. Okay? That's the overview of how the strategy will work. Any questions? Okay, now, um, here's the thing. We need to start doing some modeling. So we're going we're gonna to assume everybody votes every day. If you change the simulation to vote every year or whatever, it's not going to change much. It's going to change the rate of change of the generosity parameter. It's not going to be a big deal. Okay, so every day, everybody's going to vote about whether to change the generosity parameter. The community is going to vote either minus P, 0, or plus P, where P is 0 0.001. So remember G. So at... Any one step, G is going to go up by P, stay zero, or down by P. Okay? So we're just going to make little changes in generosity. I'm going to start out with no generosity. In other words, I'm going to assume that the community is not cooperating in any way because I wanted to see if the community would vote to be generous, which is an interesting feature in its own right. Okay? Um, and you, you, you should be thinking here of John Rawls and uh, things like emergence of the, the difference principle because that's actually what we're going to be getting at here in a little bit. G, I'm going to force between 0 and 0.5 for the reasons we stated before. Like Abhishek said the, the you know, 0.5 was the maximum amount you, generosity such that you get equalization on one transfer. Okay? Um, zero means no cooperation whatsoever. The question is going to be how do individuals choose, okay, um, whether to increase or decrease. And what the basic assumption I'm going to use is that everybody is greedy. In other words, we all vote in our own interest, and that's it. I don't vote to try to help the community. I vote to try to help me, okay? So, my measure of goodness is going to be J-I-K. I indexes a person. You know, each person in the rooms, give it a number, and that's their number. I, K is just time. Um, how well they are doing financially on day K by two terms, as I mentioned before, but a little more detail now. The sum of the donations to I 
and by I to others up till yesterday. Okay? So I'm going to, it's like I'm being this really nitpicky person. I'm keeping track of every bit of money everybody gave me over my whole lifetime, minus all the money I had to give away, and I'm going to use that number to help me decide whether I want more generosity or less generosity in the system. Second thing is the expenditures of this person on themselves multiplied by a factor S, and I just picked S equal ton. I adjusted it quite a bit, and it, it doesn't seem to matter much what it's. So, from the voter's perspective, what they want to pick G as is something that would increase JI, because what that would mean is, is that would give me more donations to me, raises my income, right? It would make me give less away and allow me to spend more on myself so I get to eat more or whatever. Okay? And uh, um, now, in the beginning here, we're going to act as though voter one is the only one making the decision. Later on, we'll come back to multiple voters. Okay? So, in the, the summary of this is what JI means is spend as much as possible on myself and nothing on others. That's really what I want to do. Okay? So, each person's going to act greedy here. That's a very important point. Keep that in mind when we start seeing the results. Okay? Next, we're going to pick G. This is for the I person. We're going to pick this based on what's called uh, hill climbing. And in particular, we're going to assume that JI is a hill shape. So hill shape means like this. Okay? This is JI. It's got, you know, some shape. And this formula is a lot easier than it looks. Okay? So the first thing is on the left hand side is at K, I want to know what G of K should be. What should the generosity parameter be? That's the thing I'm trying to figure out. The left side is simply what it was the last time we voted. Okay? And then there's this term here on the right. Okay? Now, alpha is just um, a, uh, a constant, positive constant. Okay? So don't worry about that guy. And the question is, is what is that term in the brackets? Okay. Now, if you think about it for a minute, you should see from freshman calculus or high school calculus what that is. Let me see what it is. What's it like? It's a slope. It's a derivative. It's a discrete derivative. Okay, that's all it is. So what is the derivative? What it says is, it says, it looks back an extra step. This is a, a important too. So look at the denominator first. It looks at the GK minus one is the value of generosity that led to JIK. GK minus two is the generosity that led to JIK minus one. Therefore, the change in that generosity led to the change in JI. Now here's the thing. You just have to consider the plus or minus cases. So let's say that um, this number, GK minus 1, is bigger than this, so the denominator is positive. And let's say that JI minus JK minus 1 is positive. That means brackets positive, obviously, right? Now, if brackets positive, that means I'm going to increase generosity, right? Because the bracket time times alpha, which is positive, adds on to the previous generosity to create the new generosity. So it increases. But why does that make sense? If you go back to the bracket and consider the example, if this is positive, the denominator, it means that I increased at, from k minus 2 to k minus 1, I increased g. And in doing so, I increased ji from k minus 1 to k. That's good. That's what I want for me, right? So at the last step, by increasing generosity, I increased my welfare. I'm doing better. And if I'm greedy, that means I want to increase generosity more because I'm going to be doing better yet. That's, all, that's the basic idea. Now, the thing is, is you can do all the plus minus cases. There, there's there's uh, four of them, right? Because it's possible that the denominator is positive and the numerator is negative. That means that by increasing generosity, I'm doing worse. 
Okay, that would be like Courtney's case, what we were just discussing a minute, a minute ago. So if I am doing worse, then it's negative. But look what happens, the beauty, beauty of the formula. Negative bracket times a positive alpha. Well, that means it's negative. That means I'm going to decrease generosity. See, it adjusts everything in the right direction. Okay? So this, pre this uh, formula is an approximation to um, what's called hill climbing or gradient um, ascent in optimization theory. That's a very, very standard idea. Okay, this is, you know, no magic. It's just using um, um, standard stuff. So, um, okay, ignore the bottom formula. Um, next, <laughs> here's the thing. The, the formula just guided us on what to do. Do you notice that the bracket was the key? The bracket said, well, Increase G or decrease G. And if brackets equal to zero, obviously, it stays the same. So look it. Bracket greater than zero means increase G, vote plus one. So the person says, vote plus one. Or decrease G means bracket was less than zero, decrease G, or stay the same. Okay, does everybody see that? So I use the formula to get the logic. But one individual doesn't control the generosity parameter for the whole group. They only can vote on it. Okay, so I'm using their own individual um, assessment via the bracket about which direction to adjust. And then I'm going to form a majority vote. Okay, <coughs> is everybody with me? Now, um, so majority vote's actually quite easy. If you think about it, if everybody in this room has a plus one, a minus one, or a zero in their hand, and I simply sum them up, and then check if it's over zero, that's checking if how many votes were over, that checks the majority, right? Or less than zero and so forth. It's, it's, it's just a simple little math trick. So the sum, okay, if it's greater than zero, then the community majority vote is plus P. If it's less than zero, the community votes minus P. If it's equal to zero, the community votes zero. Of course, equal zero case is highly unlikely. Um, and then we change the parameter, the generosity parameter. Okay? Uh, and then um, move um, forward. In other words, I pass the G back down to all the people, everybody agrees to use it, and then the next wealth transfer happens, then the next assessment happens, the next vote happens, the next G adjustment happens, and it keeps looping like this. So you notice there's a feedback going on. There's a very complex feedback control system. In this situation, the democracy is a feedback control system. Okay? It's, 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 uh, the collection of the votes and the changing of the policy. It's, it's looping this way, okay? All right, here's what happens. Equal community, all right? So everybody's the same. Everybody's making a dollar a day. Everybody's trying to save $25 a day. And uh, so this one, this one, uh, this, is, this is really nice um, because if you look at it, um, Everybody's spending okay. Remember our, remember our format for our plots. The top one is person one. The top row is person one. The second row is person two. The third row is person three. The, the left column is what you spend on yourself. Middle is red, um, blue means um, donate by the individual. Red is get donated to the individual. And then air is uh, desired wealth minus actual wealth. So if you look at it, you say, well, this is somehow doing what? They're donating each other and they're getting money they're getting money from each other and they're and they're take you know they're giving each other money they're getting money from each other and it raises in other words it, it go you see in the, this initial period it goes up okay and everybody starts sharing and, and if you look at it you sort of say well wait a minute that means that everybody is what they are giving as much as they receive cool and it also shows that somehow the system 
adjusted the G value off of zero. Remember this community starts out as uncooperative. That's the left hand side for the column in the middle, right? When G is equal to zero, nobody's giving each other anything. So what, you know what's happening here. Somehow G is going up and everybody starts giving each other more and more and in the end, the generosity pro parameter must be up. So very clearly this is a, an improvement over the individual case. Um, and it's, it's the same sort of idea as in the last lecture where nobody wins, I mean, everybody wins, nobody loses, okay? And it's seemingly magic. Um, and the only reason this happens, again, is because of the equality between the individuals, okay? That's why it's happening. Now, let's look at voting, okay? So these plots are a little different. Um, at the top, uh, first of all, the black line is just at zero. Uh, I do is I sum up the vote. So I, I take, let's say Tyler's voting every day. I just take the sum of his votes um, over time and um, I'm summing up plus or minus one. And uh, so when it's raising, I'm getting a, another, he's voting to increase. When it, that plot, those plots, those noisy plots are going down, that means he's voting to decrease and so on and so forth, okay? Now, um, the, the person, person one is, is K or black, two is blue, three is red, so everybody's kind of voting around there, and look what happens to the generosity level. Not surprising, because almost all the time, except for that little initial period, people are voting to increase the parameter, the generosity parameter, generally speaking. And so it raises up to 0.5, I, I cap it at 0.5, and we end up with the community figuring out by itself, via democracy, that it ought to be generous. It's cool. All right, that's pretty amazing. But, again, it's all equal people. Okay. All right, um, questions, comments? Now, of course, the difficulty is the unequal. So we're gonna have what I'm gonna call poor skewed community. That means I'm gonna have three people, one rich, two poor, okay? And uh, in particular, in this case, the first person is earning $1.25 a day, um, person one, the rich guy, just like we used in the last the convention in the last uh, lecture. Uh, persons two and three are making a dollar a day. And that's the only difference is, and you just rerun the sim, okay? Now, look what happens in this case. Um, Oh, where to start? Why don't we start with the middle column? So you can clearly see the, the person one is, there's the blue dominates, so that means they're, they are giving a lot more than they receive, okay? In fact, if you just go to the left, you can see that their spending is, is hurt by that. The two poor guys are saying, gimme, 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 and it's hurting the rich guy, okay? Um, the two poor guys are, the reds kind of dominate, so they're getting more than they give because they're getting from this guy up here. These two guys are also helping each other out, of course, okay? But kind of for, from their perspective, the left-hand plots are nice because they're spending a fair amount. They're spending more um, than, than number one, the rich guy, okay? Um, then the other issue comes down to uh, the poor guys. Uh, you got to remember. You got to compare back to plots, but I, I think you can remember that this this is actually a pretty low variance on this. So they're doing a good job at doing wealth regulation. These two guys. Um, this guy, uh, not so much, because he's giving away too much money. Okay. Um, so in this situation, for the simulation parameters. The democracy seems to be working in favor of the majority. Poor people, right? That's assuming in a country you, where you have rich and poor that you'd have equal voice for the poor. Okay, in the voting um, for this, you can see, and this is not at all surprising, so the, the, the blue is number two and the red is number three, and they're always voting for more generosity. Number Number one, uh, the rich guy is always voting against it, right? Or often voting against it. That's not surprising. But it's interesting because because of the, the democracy balances the votes, this generosity level doesn't go to 
It's down here. And the effect of that, if you remember from uh, last lecture, is, is that it will slow down the redistribution rate in a community. Okay? So it, 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 you give the rich guy voice too, and what he's essentially doing is he's suffering for it, but he's also slowing down the redistribution strategy. Okay? Um, next, now we're going to go rich skew. We're going to have two rich guys and a poor guy. Now, in this case, let's look at the middle column. In this situation, sort of an obvious thing happens. You know, red is, the, these guys are giving money away. This guy's getting all the money. He's the poor guy. So the blue, I'm sorry, the blue, the blue goes down here. This, this guy, this guy is, these guys are helping each other out, out, out some. But they may be even getting money from this guy at certain times. So there's a redistribution going on. Uh, over here, these guys make or spend about the same amount on themselves, but that poor guy is spending more on himself. Why? Because he's being given fair amount of donations from the rich. Um, and then these are as uh, the, the error plots are as um, expected. So um, you can read a lot into this, these simulations. I mean, if you think about you know, the poor skewed case and the rich skewed case, and, and rather than thinking about these as being three people, think of them as the percentage of people in the population below a poverty level, et cetera. And there's some pretty obvious interpretations um, about what's going on here, um, it, it, assuming that you had this kind of wealth distribution strategy. Of course, in the United States, we don't have something like this, for instance. I'm sure no country on the earth has a, this kind of democracy. But you could start modeling um, a democracy and trying to figure out what's fair versus not. I think, though, it's probably more realistic to vote to consider a community-based one with, you know, 100 people rather than a million. Next. Well, the voting is sort of as expected. Um, the red guy, the poor guy is voting for generosity. Consistently, these guys are not, and they're against the generosity, the two rich guys, and we end up with even a lower amount of generosity that evolves over time, okay? So really, um, not, nothing, it's not surprising there, but I think what the, me the takeaway message for this is that, that it's, the optimization is sort of interpolating between the desires. It's, it's, it's a compromise-based system. It's trying to say, let's find the middle of the road, okay? And, uh, that's, that's a pretty cool aspect of democracy. It's trying to do, it's by trying to do, satisfy the greed of every individual, it sort of picks the mi middle, right? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a big, yeah, it's a big compromise. And if you can all agree, like a country can agree to set up a democracy, live under constitution and so forth, this is the value because it can, it can perform this kind of very complex function for for a society. Okay, um, next. Okay, Monte Carlo simulations. So, the bottom uh, axis um, uh, is I or inequality. Now, here's what I'm doing. I take the rich, um, I take a rich guy and a poor guy uh, oh, let me say this right. Um, no, I take three people, put them in the middle. I parameterizes between zero and one. When it's zero, they're all equal. When it's one, there's separation, there's skew in the society. That's all I do. To do that, I leave one person in the middle, and I take the other two, and I pull their income parameters apart making one make less, making one make more than the one in the middle that I leave there. So more and more inequality in the society corresponds to the horizontal axis being over here at a one, okay? So let's start on the left side, um, and let, let me explain the vertical axis too. Uh, so the top plot is the mean and standard deviation of the money spent on, by person one on themselves, and you see it starts out a little above 2.4. Um, and, uh, and you see it's almost 2 point, about the same value, 
for the left hand side for all three people. Why? Because I0 meaning three equal people. Okay? Run a bunch of simulations, take the average, find the standard deviation, spent over a lifetime, plot a number. Take the inequality, take the two people, pull them apart and income a little bit, do a bunch of simulations, find the mean, standard deviation, money spent. Here's what happened. Rich persons, as inequality goes up, the rich guy starts spending less. So does the, the poor guy here, but the, the poorest guy starts spending more on themselves. So that's consistent with what we saw, right, in the other simulations. Okay, and then you see it, it's pretty complex. It's hard to understand why these humps happen. Uh, this is why you do these simulations. But it seems that uh, if, there's, if there's a certain amount of inequality in the society, there's going to be um, less fairness. In other words, if, if, it's, if it's very unequal, it actually um, is more fair than if it's somewhat unequal. Interesting feature of this. Now, the middle plots are actually pretty, not at all surprising. Um, these should be close to each other because that's the middle guy who doesn't change much. The guy at the top, the blue is the money that he's given away, the red is donated to him. So as there's more, in it, more inequality, um, he has to give more and more away. But there's that interesting dip there. Um, and then the red goes down. Um, and then this plot here is the inverse up here. Right? Because this is, the, this is the poor guy, that's the rich guy, you know, in terms of donate and receive. Now, these dips actually, if you get into some analysis, you can figure out what's going on. It's actually related to something else we're going to do later in class called um, management of common pool resources. Inequality has some surprising effects, and has, this is characteristic of what happens a number of times. Okay, and on the right plot, there's really not anything surprising. Um, you know, this guy, the poor guy does better at regulating his wealth and <coughs> the rich guy does worse, worse regulating his wealth as there's more inequality because the rich guy is giving the poor guy, okay? Okay, um, next. What's interesting too is, is the way the votes come out in terms of uh, the inequality. So again, on these plots I've got inequality on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is votes. So this is the poor guy, uh, he doesn't vote for, gen uh, I'm, sorry. This, I'm sorry, this is the rich guy, he doesn't you know, vote for generosity. But these, the poorest guy does vote for generosity, but interestingly, the guy in the middle also votes for generosity. So this is a little tricky because the reason, that he, you would think that he would just stay, it would be here. It's not because he's voting for generosity because this guy, well there's a few things that are happening. With a little bit of generosity, the rich guy gives to him, but then sometimes this poor guy will even give to him, too. Okay? So there's reasons that happen. The bottom plot is, is actually interesting, and it's consistent. It summarizes the previous plots. That is, as inequality increases, okay, for whatever it is, rich skewed, poor skewed, generosity decreases. Okay? So the end, the end generosity ends up being, average generosity in the system, ends up being lower and lower with more inequality, okay? So that sort of says that the, the, what we've been saying all along in the sense that if you have a equal society, the democracy is working great, everybody's sharing, helping each other out, it's sort of like utopia, okay? But as you get away from, you have a more and more unequal society, it gets worse and worse, okay? In terms of what the, the the democracy um, can do. Okay. Um, okay. Questions. Um, okay. So, is all this fair? You know, what would John Rawls say? Now, if, if, I don't know what John Rawls would say, but I, this, this, this form of simulation of a democracy is consistent with what Rawls was talking about, because he's talking about such a general situation, except for I'm sure he had in mind more than three people. Okay, But 
nothing's really going to change if you crank this way up. I mean, these principles hold. So what do I mean by saying, what would John Rawls say? Well, here's what I mean. See, it's, it's sort of quite interesting that this doesn't go to zero. So what John Rawls insisted upon is via an overlapping consensus, we would get his two principles of justice, you know, uh, and in particular the second principle that had to do with equal opportunity, and uh, the difference principle. And remember the difference principle who says that inequalities are allowed so long as they reduce inequalities. So if you think about it, that's what this is saying, because this is saying that generosity in any of these rich skewed, poor skewed system will still, will still have a greater than zero value. The effect of that will always be to transfer wealth away from the very wealthy to the very poor, right? That's the effect. So it looks like these simulations validate exactly what John Rawls is saying. He didn't say how much inequality had to be reduced. He just said it would be reduced. And that's what this is saying, because the average G value, even under a highly unequal situation, is greater than zero. Okay? So the rich are going to give to the poor, which is a bit surprising. Okay? Of course, we have another ideal characteristic. That is, we're assuming that the rich will stay in the society. Some rich people leave their society, right? It happens all the time. It happens, it's called brain drain when it comes from the developing world to Europe or the US, for instance. Um, it's called tax evasion sometimes when the rich move out of the US in order to avoid taxes. Okay, so this kind of stuff is happening. So people do opt out. Okay, I'm assuming here, of course, that people stay in. Well, guess what? That's what Rawls assumed too. He assumed that everybody stayed in. Because the, the situation is more complex if you, people can just leave, okay? So um, that's pretty satisfying to see, you know, it's not identical to what Rawls is saying, but it's, it's really close in some ways. Now, next thing is <clears throat> this effect of S. And what I mean in particular, you know, how, when I sat down to define greed, I, I just thought in the nastiest way, I thought, well, I want as many donations as I can get from my neighbors. I don't want to give them anything. I want to spend as much on myself. That's what I thought, okay? And I just wrote it down, did the simulation. Um, I had to pick the S value. I just said, I don't know, 10's a wonderful number. I like that today. I'm just going to throw that in there and it worked great. I mean, it's just the first time. I'm like, wow, it worked. And anything worse first time for me is a shock. Um, so, so I, I uh, went back and I started adjusting the darn thing, and it does, doesn't seem to have much effect. It seems to work out fine. And then I went away, and you'll see in the code that you, you'll get from the website, I went and put in a, a measure of how close um, wealth was to desired wealth, too. And that seems to have no real major effect either. So some measure of greed seems to work good. It, but isn't it cool, though? If everybody agrees to be in the society, everybody agrees to democracy, then everybody can be greedy, and we can get cooperation. Because non-zero G values mean cooperation, right? Because the rich aren't going to help the poor. And so in a certain sense, that is cooperation. Another criticism of this work could be that um, you could say, well, is the value of money really independent of how much you have? Some would say yes. But others would say no, because the difference between making an average of a dollar a day and two dollar a day is it's really quite important. That's, that's uh, in, in many places crucial. But if you make 65K a year, roughly the salary you make when you graduate, then adding on $365 doesn't matter much, right? You're not going to quibble over that necessarily. So the value of money changes based on the amount of money you have. And so, in a certain sense, you, you know, the decision making here with respect to voting could be changed. In particular, and it would only help, think of it, the rich people would put in a discount on money. If their money went up so much, they'd say, I don't care about having more. And that would tend to make them give away more money and make them more generous, right? 
And you can think of people like Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or, or you know, that do just that. If I've got this many billion dollars, I'm not afraid to give away 100 million or whatever. Okay, so, so um, what money's really worth to an individual in voting depends on how much money they have, okay? It's not just an absolute sum, increase, decrease. That's the way I have it now. It's the most greedy way. I have it the most greedy way now. If I added a discount that would decrease the value of money as money went up, then this situation will only get better because the rich would then just say, well, I don't care much, just give it away, okay? Okay, um, now some conclusions, and I got a discussion then on some related issues. So is there, an, I want you to put on your uh, thinking cap here, is there another way to model uh, democracy? I mean, this was, you know, one way to do it. Rather straightforward. I needed a few math formulas, but it's about as simple as I could think about how to do it. But we could, really, we could do better, right? How would you do it? Yes. If we're going to factor like you know, realistic, then we need to skew the, the other vote of the rich to be more influential and count more. Yes. So, so uh, what we would have to do that would be pretty that would be pretty easy to put in, right? Because all I'd have to do is not have everybody vote plus one minus one zero. I'd have them vote numbers and then do a combination of those numbers. That would give them um, greater uh, influence on the movement of direction. Yeah. Anybody else? How else in democracy? I know. I know. Sorry about the three people thing. I mean, you know, the three people thing. You understand the topology there is everybody's connected to everybody. You know, that's as if it's Aaron, Courtney, and Tyler, and they're all. But in this class, if it's a neighbor topology. It's different, right? So we could certainly increase the n, the number of people. We could change the topology. Okay, you're going to get some interesting features come out of that. But what else? I mean, you could have a representative democracy, things like that. But um, see, a democracy, the way I set it up, is designed for the generosity parameter, right? But there's a lot many things we vote on in a democracy that are not increase or decrease taxation, it might be, should this be the taxation rate or should this be the tax ration rate, taxation rate, right? That's a typical thing, but that's easy to put in here, right? That's no problem. But then there's other things we vote on. We vote on, you know, uh, Obama-Romney or uh, whatever in your country. If you have a democracy, you, you vote on people, and that's a different case too. And we can represent those cases too. That's not that hard. Um, the information structure matters a lot with the topology, and then the media matters a lot. So there's a lot of issues that could be added in here, okay? Um, and in particular, it's not clear how voters are gonna vote, all right? I mean, it, it, I don't, I think in this country, it's absolutely not the case that people vote just based on their pocketbook, right? What else do people use? In fact, many people vote against their pocketbook. It's very clear they do. So what, what, what are some of people's priorities over their pocketbook? Religion. Religion. You know, pick any, any you know, social issue associated with religion or associated with... Uh, any of the controversial issues, right? And people put those number one over their pocketbook. Now that gets, I'm sorry, you, you, education. education. And there's a, there's a lot of stuff that is really important to people. It isn't, doesn't have a clear connection to their pocketbook. And in some cases, no connection to their pocketbook. It's all about morality for them, right? So, so can we model those things? I'd say most of that, no, no. I mean, I'm sorry, it's hard to put numbers to <laughs> pick your topic, right? I mean, it, it's not going to work. So I, and there's no claim here that, that we're going to be able to model something as general as a democracy in, in a country when it comes to, like, let's just say you're in a country and you're trying to vote on whether to accept a, the deal of a peace process. 
and all. You're not gonna you're not gonna quantify that numerically. No way. I don't. I, I can't imagine how you could. But um, with respect to cash, see, I, I'm making a choice here that's making this much easier. And that is, is I'm talking about money, and you can put numbers to money, and then we can transfer numbers, simulate it in a computer. The democracy is all based on numbers. You see what I'm saying? I'm making it much, much easier by making that kind of a choice. But of course, money matters, right? In the HDI, what was money? Money's income. It's, you know, the people study that and say, well, this is cor strongly correlated with your standard of living. Money matters, okay? It's not everything, though, because remember, HDI also has education and health in there, and equal weighting, okay? Um, so, so the other thing is, is that um, the simulation has some real problems because everybody has different criteria for voting. You might vote on a moral principle, educational principle, health care might matter to you the most. You've got a hierarchy of priorities. You know, some, some people pick the presidential candidate based on how attractive they are. I mean, they do. Uh, or the personality, perceived personality, and so on and so forth. Um, in my simulations, everybody's got the same criterion. If you change the criteria, keep it numeric, and change the criterion, stuff's going to change, right? So, so there's there's a lot that can change here. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. We finished a little early. I 